what will you do when the water runs out? What will you do when there's no sign of the water coming back? Do you have water stored? Exactly how much water should you have stored? What's up, my preppers? Water storage isn't the most sexiest thing to talk about in regards to prepping, or maybe it is. Hey, how you doing? But regardless, water storage is a very significant hurdle that preppers must overcome. You can just stop buying one gallon jugs of water like this and setting them on a shelf. A lot of new preppers do that. But I always advise preppers to start from a plan, a personal preparedness plan. Know what your water needs are, how long you want to survive a post-SHTF event, and set milestones along the way to reaching your ultimate preparedness goal. And that will encourage you to keep at it because you'll see progress. In this video, we're going to add some math and methodology to water storage. I'm going to help you identify how much water you might actually need, and we'll consider some tips on the best ways to store that water. So let's start with this question of how much water you should store. Well, you're going to get different answers from different people. But out of curiosity's sake, I posed this question to followers on my Facebook page. Let's see what some of them said. As much as possible, and then some. A couple Sawyer mini filters per person. As much as you can, and then ways to purify water as well. Minimum is one gallon per person per day. In reality, it's more like three gallons per person per day. Ideally, at least three gallons per person per day. Tall order, but more than anyone could carry, make a home over an underground water source. As you can see, advice is a bit all over the map. The as much as possible answer is really the easy way out of the question. That robs you of the opportunity to analyze your water needs and determine how long your water will last after an SHTF event. These are important things you want to think through. For what it's worth, the general recommendation is to store one gallon of water per person per day. In fact, if we head over to the CDC's website, we see that's exactly what they recommend. Store at least one gallon of water per person per day for three days for drinking and sanitation. Try to store a two-week supply if possible. Consider storing more water than this for pregnant women, people who are sick, pets, or if living in a hot climate. However, that's an exceptionally subjective number. It's about like calculating how much ammo you need. More. The answer is always more. One gallon per person per day may or may not work for you. Let's consider some of the needs. The most obvious reason for storing water, of course, is for drinking. Humans can only go three days without water before and even attempting to go a day is going to be problematic. Personal story here, I once had a piece of chicken stuck in my throat. I didn't know that's what was happening, but it resulted in my not having the ability to drink. In fact, even saliva wouldn't go down. It happened in the evening around dinner time, and by breakfast the next morning, all I wanted was a glass of water. I'd never wanted a glass of water more in my life. I went until about noon the next day before I actually had a glass of water, and it was the best glass of water ever. And then in a post-SHTF type situation, if you're outside in the heat or doing strenuous work, not having enough water is going to lead to headaches, irritability, and heat-related injuries. Those are things you really want to avoid after an SHTF event. The other thing is that even in many natural disasters, public water systems and private wells often become polluted. And if you've ever been around a flood or two, you've had to experience boil water advisories. If we head over to the University of Nebraska Lincoln Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources, we see the force of floodwaters can also disrupt or damage well or water supply infrastructure and directly introduce the contaminated water into the well. Now beyond floods, water access often becomes a problem after the power goes out. If you have a well and a pump, then you need a generator to draw from it. If you're in public water, then the public water distribution system should have backup generators. Those will run and they should get you through any sort of short-term challenge, but if the power is out for a longer period of time, think an EMP, you've got problems. And if there's a drought on top of that, things are even worse. And if you're going to cook post-disaster, and you are, you're going to want water for washing, boiling, and rehydrating food. Preppers are known for stocking beans, bullets, and bandages, but have you ever tried eating dried beans? No, it's terrible. You're going to need water for those. So whether you're stocking rice, lentils, beans, flour, whatever, 
you're gonna need water for cooking. And even if you think you're gonna live off MREs after disaster, something I wouldn't recommend trying, you're still gonna need water for the chemical heater. And if you've got stocked freeze-dried food, as many preppers do, you need water to rehydrate that food. And then you have cleaning. It's not a big deal to go without a shower for a few days, but remembering the ice storm of Maine in 1998, when freezing rain fell for about 50 hours, resulting in about 200,000 reports of power outages, it took up to 20 days for some parts of the state to get power back. People were stealing generators. Any restaurant with power was flooded with people looking for a hot meal. Many ended up renting hotel rooms just to get a hot shower. On my backpacking trips, I can go for three or four days without a shower before I start to become pretty gross. Granted, those are heavy, hot, sweaty days, but post-collapse, personal hygiene is going to be important because you don't want to be subject to ailments beyond our bodies in any type of post-collapse situation. We also need to wash our clothes. We need to wash surfaces. We need to wash our dishes. In other words, we need clean water. And if things get really bad after a collapse and raiders are pillaging your village, you might need water for waterboarding. As you can see, water storage needs accelerate quickly and storing significant amounts of water to meet your needs after collapse, that takes up a lot of space. My large shore water water storage tanks that I've reviewed in another video, those hold about 260 gallons each and you can see how large they are. This water storage container from Works, this holds 20 gallons, you can see how large it is. Fill it on the top. It's designed so that you can stack these on top of one another. It's got two handles, one on each side, so you can carry it with two people. It comes with a spigot. I like this. I've used this camping before, car camping. I set it on the tailgate of the truck, and we can draw water from it all weekend without problem. This is a more common water jug made by Coleman. holds five gallons. Also has a spigot on top, single carry handle. A lot of people use these. I used to use that Coleman water jug quite often, but now I've moved to the Wavian water jug. It's a jerry can style. This fits better um, when I'm stocking a lot of gear in the back of the truck. It has a spigot that tucks inside the fill hole. These are nice. These are popular with a lot of overlanding folks. I also like this aqua brick a lot. This holds three gallons. So if you're getting up there in age and strength is becoming a challenge and you can't lift five gallons quite easily, you can pair back to three. This has a spigot that goes inside, carry handle on the top, carry handle on the back. Now note what all of those jugs have in common that the typical one gallon jug does not. They are made of thicker, light blocking plastic. This style of plastic will degrade over time, particularly when subject to light and heat. Links to all of these containers in the description below. I'm fortunate that I have the space required to store enough water for a longer term collapse, but not everyone is in that situation. If you're in a tiny home or a condo or an apartment, space becomes a significant problem quite quickly and you will find a challenge to store enough water for yourself for an extended period of time, let alone if you have a family. Picture your standard five gallon fish tank. It's not huge, but it takes up enough space that it usually demands its own designated space on a table or stand. Now imagine you want to store 50 gallons of water to start. You need 10 of these tanks. Suddenly you're looking around your home wondering where. Water is also very heavy. One gallon of water weighs 8.345 pounds. That means those sure water tanks that I have, those weigh 2.2 tons each. So storing bulk food on a shelf in a closet, that's easier to do than it is to store significant amounts of water. This is why, regardless of how much water you store, it's important to have the means to filter and purify water after a collapse and to know strategies to conserve water. Okay, so what do I advise? My general recommendation is to store 1.5 gallons per person per day. Is that a recommendation that's gonna work for everyone? No, it certainly isn't one that everyone is going to agree upon. So if you want to come up with your own estimate on how much water you should store, Examine your needs and anticipate what your needs will be after a collapse. And to do that, you wanna look at the three categories, hydration, cooking, and cleaning. So how much do you need for hydration? Well, that depends. How much do you weigh? Do you live in a hot climate or a cool climate? Are you going to be engaging in significant physical exertion after a collapse? As a rough guide, consider this. According to Healthline, females should consume on average 0.72 gallons per day. Men should consume 0.97 gallons per day. Of course, if you've ever tried to drink a gallon of water per day, you know that that's not super easy to do. 
but consider that you're also getting water through carbonated beverages, through soups, through tea, etc. Suddenly 1.5 gallons per person per day doesn't sound like a lot. Add in some cooking, add in some cleaning. If you're living in a hot state or you're gonna be doing some physical labor, that number creeps quite quickly. Now let's look at cooking. The standard for pasta, as an example, is four to six quarts of water per pound of pasta. That's a minimum of one gallon of water to one pound of pasta. We could cut that standard water to pasta ratio after a crisis, but there are other foods that are gonna require water as well. Dehydrated, freeze-dried foods, rice, beans, same thing. Now, Arthur Bradley, author of Handbook to Practical Disaster Preparedness for the Family, he shares the same one gallon per person per day for both drinking and cooking. You can use that um, and something is better than nothing. And if you do go with that, well, hey, you're 66% of the way to my recommendation. It's a good book though, link in the description. Now let's look at cleaning. And this is where water can really add up fast. If we assume you're only going to take two showers a week and use a conservative five gallons, that's 10 gallons per week. You can cut that showering assumption with a sponge bath or bathing in a creek, but that's not going to work for everyone. Regardless, let's also say that you're going to use a third of a gallon a day for washing your hands and another third of a gallon per day to wash dishes. Add that in. What about toilets? If you're in a situation without power, you'll have to pour water in the toilet tank as well. You don't have to waste clean water on this though. If you catch your used gray water from showers, dishwashing, hand washing, etc., this water could be perfect for flushing. But flushing the toilet, that's an area where you can certainly save water. If you've got a power outage from a snowstorm, Sure, go ahead and use some of your stored water to flush the toilet. But if it's anything longer than that, you wanna look at alternatives, building a latrine outside if that's possible, or just using stream water to flush the toilet. If we assume you're gonna be hand washing clothes, you'll have to account for water there as well. But again, there are ways to conserve. Take fewer showers maybe, use gray water when possible. Maybe you have some disposable plates and silverware that you can use. In the winter, maybe you can melt snow and ice. However, then you're gonna to have to store more fuel. But in summary, I think the 1.5 gallons is a minimum. Better to over-prepare than under-prepare. And in my opinion, 1.5 gallons is certainly not over-preparing. Here's a final helpful hint. Head over to my website, link in the description, and I have a water calculator that can help you determine your needs. So let's use it as an example. Here's the calculator. So let's say you're a family of four people and you are, have a lofty goal of preparing for six months. Using my recommendations of 1.5 gallons per day, based on the entries, you need almost 1,100 gallons. And that is going to weigh over 9,000 pounds and the space required is 146 cubic feet. So what do you think? What is your advice to preppers and what is your strategy for storing water? Is it to rely mostly on water filtration and purification? Do you have advice to give? Sound off in the comments, por favor.